What's up my fellow Potterheads? It's Alex the Booktuber back here with another video. And tonight I will be doing a book review on the final volume, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. And I just wanted to say, I finally finished the book. And I enjoyed reading it. And for those of you who did not know, is that reading the entire Harry Potter series has been on my bucket list for as long as I can remember. And I'm so glad that I finally accomplished that. And I am so proud of myself for doing that. And if you guys feel the same way as I do, then go smash that like button if you think reading the Harry Potter series would be on your bucket list too as well. So anyway, let's start tonight's review. So, Harry is now 17 years old, and now there's this war with Lord Voldemort and the Horcruxes. And in the beginning is that Harry's Uncle Vernon and Petunia and Cousin Dudley are all forced to leave Privet Drive for good and now Harry has come of age where he'll be on his own from now on and and then later on in the story Lord Voldemort and his Death Eaters are going to be in pursuit of Harry and his friends and and eventually Friends and foes will begin dying in the story. And, and then Harry, Ron, and Hermione have now dropped out of Hogwarts so they can go on their quest to destroy the rest of the Horcruxes that Lord Voldemort has created all those years ago. And if you think they can destroy all the Horcruxes so they can finally defeat Voldemort for good, then go smash that like button if you think they can all do it. And and if you think Lord Voldemort will be dead at the end of the story, then I recommend you reading The Deathly Hallows. And, and there are some good parts of the story like one of the members of the Weasley family gets married. And then there's all kinds of truths and dark secrets to figure out about some of some of some of the characters in the story too. And and all kinds of things will begin to happen too, like, and there'll be all kinds of new mysteries to solve and stories that Harry and his friends will figure out. And on my scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give this book a seven because. When I read the story, some most parts were kind of dark and grim, kind of like the grim in the cup from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. But I still enjoyed reading the story of Harry Potter and I'm glad I'm finally done with the series for good. And I will keep you guys all updated on what series I will be reading next. And Harry Potter has really inspired me all these years. And, and for most of you who do not know is that I'm a huge Potterhead myself. And my house is Gryffindor, just like Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Neville, Seamus, Dean, Fred, George, Percy, Bill, Charlie. And, 
and Gryffindor is like the best house in my opinion of the four. And my second favorite and choice for a house would be Hufflepuff because Hufflepuffs are hard workers, very patient, and they're sweet people. And my third choice would be Ravenclaw because they're full of wisdom, they're very creative, and they're expressive. And Ravenclaw is actually my girlfriend Sydney's house because she's a Potterhead too, just like me. And I also learned on the internet is that for people who are Potterheads that, that are dating, and I think they make the best couples, and if you guys think so too, then you can go smash that like button again if you think Potterheads make the best couples by far. If so, that's awesome. And always remember to be proud of yourselves, and, and it's okay to be a, a Potterhead. No matter how obsessed you can be, like whether it's good or not. And don't let anyone tell you differently. And there's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. And there's nothing to hide. And, and my least choice for a house would be Slytherin. Because that's the most evil house that you do not want to get sorted into. Because Slytherins are very cunning and ambitious. And Slytherin is the house where you-know-who, a.k.a. he who should not be named, was sorted when he was a student at Hogwarts. And the founders of those houses were Godric Gryffindor, Helga Hufflepuff, Rowena Ravenclaw, and finally... Salazar Slytherin. And if I was a wizard in real life, I would love to go to Hogwarts to learn magic and and do all kinds of cool stuff like maybe join the Quidditch team and fly on a broom and learn how to cast spells and I can eventually make a lot of new friends in my house. And if I was a student at Hogwarts, I wouldn't mind having a girlfriend who's either a Ravenclaw or a Gryffindor or a Hufflepuff, but definitely not a Slytherin. I mean, girls in Slytherin, no way, in my opinion. No offense to any of you Slytherins out there in the world, and I'm sure some of you Slytherins have good in you. And I'm proud to choose that my girlfriend is in Ravenclaw and I'm very happy to be dating her right now because she and I have a third year anniversary coming up on November 4th and I'm proud to call her my girlfriend and I love her so much and she does so a lot for me too as well. And she's very sweet to me too. <sighs> she just makes me so happy. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications for when I do my next video for you guys. And if you guys ever want to see me do a Harry Potter ranking pretty soon, one day, then go smash the like button if you think I should. And that is all for now. So I will be signing off. And I hope you all have a good weekend. Bye. Peace out. And as my favorite YouTuber, Miss Tessa Netting Moses, would say, don't let the muggles get you down.